Hi, in this video, I want to talk about a topic that I've been hinting at all week, ways to hit. I think everyone has some intuitive sense of ways to hit, because many real-world processes involve friction and whatnot. Your computer feels hot when it's on, and when you run, you feel hot. And after driving around for a while, your car engine feels hot. And none of these hotness relate to the working of these processes. Now, the particular kind of waste that I want to talk about is actually much more fundamental. This is the kind of waste heat that laws of physics themselves dictate must exist. So imagine an ideal, perfect world in which there are no frictions, unless you wanted them to exist, like traction, and no dissipative processes. Even in this world, you'd have this wasted. Let me be a little more concrete. Let's look at a very specific process, a heat engine cycle, the Carnot cycle. It is an idealized, purely theoretical process. No friction enters here. Now, what does it mean for a heat engine to be a heat engine? What is the purpose of a heat engine? The purpose of a heat engine is to turn heat energy into mechanical work. It's to reverse the much more natural process of work turning into heat through friction. So when you look at the Carnot heat engine cycle through that lens, the only part of the process you want is here, from 1 to 2. Except that would be a very wasteful engine. It's a single-use disposable engine. The engine starts from 1, reaches point 2, you throw it out, you get another engine at point 1, have it reach 2, then you throw that out. Okay, um, I'm clearly not being serious here. So the challenge is to bring the engine back to point one where it is ready to do work again and do network over one cycle. If you simply bring the engine back to one through the curve one, two, then it does no network. The exact same work done by the engine is done back on the engine, bringing it back to one like a ball bouncing elastically up and down on the floor. This is where some bright person realized if we reduce the temperature of the gas, it'll reduce the pressure of the gas. And compressing the gas in this state will involve doing less work, less area under the PV curve. Then when you're at the right volume, you can raise the temperature back up to state one so that the engine can do positive work again. And this area that is enclosed by the loop is what represents net work done. Now, if we had our way, our heat input, the fuel that we had to burn up to generate the high temperature, would all turn into this network. This is what we would call 100% efficient. And in an ideal world, it is really consistent with the first law. Energy is conserved. All of the heat input goes into work done. In fact, that is what happens along this isothermal curve going from 1 to 2. But what you are seeing after this is, because you need to put the engine back into the state you found it, not all of that heat input goes into doing useful work. The work you have to do back on the engine, compressing it from 3 to 4, turns into this heat output along the isothermal curve from 3 to 4. And this is the waste heat. It's the portion of the input heat that must turn back into heat by the end of the heat engine cycle. It's amazing how you can't avoid this, even though nothing in the first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy, says things must happen this way. It's uh, very tempting to think there must be a loophole here. 
I think this is what drives the search for the perpetual motion machine sometimes. And this is what I want to emphasize here. This uh, Carnot cycle does represent our best effort at doing this. It's idealized to the point no real world process can ever be. But you still can avoid turning a fraction of your input heat into output heat, the waste heat. It's at this point where we say, as physicists, there must be a law that prevents this uh, desirable good thing from happening. And this will be the topic of chapter 4, the second law of thermodynamics. Um, before I say goodbye, I want to point out one possible loophole. If you spend enough time looking at these isotherms, you come to this conclusion that these isotherms go lower and lower as you go to lower and lower temperature. So if your T2 was zero, zero Kelvin, then the area under the curve will be zero. And you will have turned all of the input heat into work. Well, reaching zero Kelvin is impossible. And making a heat engine operate there is even less possible. But this realization does help develop the intuitive idea of high quality heat and low quality heat. High quality heat energy is associated with larger differences in temperatures. With larger differences in temperatures, greater fraction of heat energy is available to the work. Sometimes this is referred to as free energy. I understand chemists define different kinds of free energy. Low quality heat would be where there's a very little difference in temperature. Sometimes when people talk about heat death, this is what they are referring to. A homogeneous universe where there's no different temperatures between different parts of the universe and the situation where it is impossible to turn any of the thermal energy into mechanical work. Alright, so on that note, goodbye.